Good morning, everyone. A Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, whatever your celebrations are, may they be meaningful and merry. Today, we're going to talk about how to look or how to look your best day and night with proper planning. Everybody's really busy, and it seems women still carry most of the load when it comes time for partying and things of that nature. So, and then when we're finished with that, we'll do our usual Q&A. So let's jump into it. What's your situation for Christmas? Or Hanukkah or Swans or whatever it is you celebrate. I say Christmas because I'm that's what I've been all my life. <laughs> now think about what your situation is. Do you have family? Uh, do you have people with special needs? We don't often think about that do we? Uh, do you have turkeys? You know the ones that the one that's in the oven and the ones that may be out in the living room. Are you spending it alone or are you spending it with friends? Are you encumbered physically some way? Have you been through surgery recently? Have you got broken bones or are you limited in some way physically? Are you missing a loved one? And what does Christmas or the holidays mean for you? It's um, no matter, uh, you know, what, what you're looking at for Christmas, we know that when you, um, well, I made a mistake here. I want to get back. To where I was. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, no matter what you are going through, uh, what your situation is, whether you have a lot of people around, whether you don't, how you spend it doesn't matter. But what matters is looking your best because. Why is that important? Because whenever we look our best, we simply enjoy our activities and the things that we're involved in a whole lot more. Because when we, you know, that final look at the mirror, when you're, you know, after you finished with doing your thing and you go to greet your guests, your family, your friends, or whatever it is, that last look at yourself in the mirror, that's what sticks in your mind's eye. And if you're happy with it, then you bring that happiness to whatever it is you do. Now, Here's some easy tips to maintain or to get you ready and to keep you looking good all day. Number one is pick a hairstyle that you don't have to groom. Today is an example. I don't have my hair down. I have it up. I could go for probably 14 to 16 hours with this hairstyle and I wouldn't have to touch it. So if you don't have to fix your hair or groom it, that eliminates one concern you have. Uh, and you can do that with scrunchies, with um, extensions, with ropes and braids like this, with hair padding, all kinds of things that you have available to you. Now the trick is, the trick is to know what you're going to do or how you're going to wear your hair before your festivities begin and be practiced in how to put the hairstyle together so that on the day when your time is very limited, you can successfully put your hairstyle together and know it's going to be great all day. As far as makeup and things are concerned, follow the advice on this channel with respect to products, the tools, the procedures, um, and just, just keep it simple. The simpler, the better. And simple doesn't mean necessarily that it doesn't show or that you don't make a striking look. Simple just means smart. Simple is smart, it's streamlined, yet it is still very effective. And Know ahead of time, because we wear the, the long wear lip color, know ahead of time what you're going to be wearing so that whether you have a blue base, uh, a, like a cool red, or whether you're wearing a warm red. Example, I'm wearing a warm red. Why? Because my blouse, the poinsettia here, and the background that I've chosen for today all has a bit of a warmth to it. There's some of the some of the some of the uh, pieces have a little bit of blue, but it's still the it still has enough warmth in it. So know that before you select your color for the day, and your touch-ups. Touch-ups should be minimal. All makeup requires touch-ups all of it. So knowing that you go in fully armed and you wear uh, products that are again are recommended on this page that will 
allow you very minimal touch-up. Usually, usually what it is, is the powder foundation around the corners of the eyes. This is where, this is where it wears out the sides of the nose and the sides of your mouth. The center of your face pretty much basically is it because it's the one that gets the most use. Now, if you're doing crying or tears of joy or whatever, you know, you're, you're going to need to touch up. But if you've got your compact handy, all you have to do is go in with the sponge or a brush if you've got it and set it aside somewhere easily accessible and then just touch up, you're done. And the other thing is, remember to wear your, put your balm on your lipstick, the Maybelline, put that on before you eat so that it helps to, um, it, it helps so that any oils that are in the food, which there will be, will not um, break down the lip color. However, if it does, we've got a way to fix that. All right, I'm going to show you some examples here of makeup uh, in the morning. We start off now for those that have children and or a family gathering where there's, you know, the frantic present opening under the tree. And when do they take pictures? When they're opening presents under the tree. And you go with bedhead and no makeup or anything. You can still go looking good. You can still wear a little bit of makeup. This makeup here in this picture takes maybe three minutes. Your dual finish powder. Put your brows on a little bit. They don't have to be full blown, but a little bit. And use your Maybelline Super Stay in a, it, with just touching it. Just you know, put put the wand on or on the top. And there's there's a video of that that I will put up here. And you just smush it together so it looks more like a stain. Add the little bit of gloss, and you're good to go all morning long with your morning look. And I have another picture here, and I'm using myself because I don't want copyright issues. Here is uh, that a uh, light color, p the pink, uh, let me see, it's uh, number 55 Perpetual Plum, has a, has a nice, soft, natural, um, natural pink look to it for the face. It's not that bright pink. It's the pink with a little bit of brown in it. So for sat or for Christmas morning, uh, hair tied to the side or whatever, you know, just looking fresh. And all I did here too was just put a little bit of eyeshadow along my lash line, on my lashes and underneath, just to give the eyes a little bit of depth. Okay, so that's our early morning makeup. Now, for early morning hair, here's, do you remember that video I did with the scrunchie and the roller? Well, put your hair up. Now, this is for people with longer hair. If you pull your hair, hair all up and just with your fingers, fast and easy, put an elastic around, wrap your hair round in a roller so that while you're looking great, your hair is being curled too. Put a scrunchie on top and voila, you have a nice relaxed look for Christmas morning. That you could, you could take this look throughout the day if you were so inclined. Okay, so let's take a look at our next one. Um, these are updos and I'm sure you have seen these before. Updos that you can do that are fairly easy. The top one uh, with the twist, that's simply twisting your hair, or you could use a rope if you have it made, and that's simply a scrunchie at the back. So if you haven't had time to curl your hair, take care of it or whatever, your scrunchies and your extensions can help you immensely to look fantastic without having to plan ahead of time. Next is the Edwardian flip. All that is is a ponytail with the elastic pulled down to oh to about this level in the center and then that ponytail much like a topsy-turvy just turn it up and under and then pin it in place it's a soft romantic look again you could wear this all day if that was a look that felt comfortable for you but in the morning what that can also do is help to curl or give your hair some wave to it down at the bottom here on well it's I think it may be your left the French roll classic easy grab all the hair up into a ponytail turn it under and I've got videos on this stick your long bobby pin in and voila it looks great and the picture on your far right is very much like what I'm wearing right now again that that can this can be done actually in in like 
five to six minutes. Again, it, it looks great for more. You can wear it all day long. So they're just options for you to look at with respect to examples. Now, let me see. Uh, I'm going to take these down and I'm going to put up a look for all you short haired femme fatales out there. There's so many things, wonderful things you can do with short hair with a little hairspray and a little back combing. Uh, and or a, a gel or products that you like that work well for you. The th reason I'm pointing this one out is one of the things in short hair that's really important, as well as long hair, is to make sure the circumference of your crown that's around here and the crown itself are lifted. With this hairstyle that we have right here, that's fine just like it is. Or she could take the, the sides and the front and bring it down. If her bangs were longer, she could have them sitting and have them quite textured. You can have nice, smooth, gelled, shorter hair, or you can texture it all up, bring it all forward, move it off to the side. There's lots of styling options with short hair. So I just wanted to make sure that I, I touched all you short haired beauties out there. Okay, makeup for the evening. So what do you do? You pump up your lips, you add your eyeshadow liner, and if you have a crease, you do that. If you don't, then you treat your eye with the hooded eye approach. And you can wear your uh, false lashes or curl your lashes and use a couple of coats of mascara if that's the route you prefer to go. Now, here's the full-blown enchilada, um, much like, actually very much what, like what I'm wearing right now. False lashes. Uh, brightened through the eye here because when you keep that nice and bright it makes a big difference. Eyebrows are done a little heavier and stronger and the lipstick is well this is flame number 25 with number 150 over top. Making sure that you're darker under here this look when it's all put together will last you hours and hours and hours. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, show that there's a whole variety of things that you can do and, uh, and a whole variety of different ways you can wear your hair, etc. But the trick is, is to plan. Okay, touch-ups. Now, that's what we want to talk about because everybody will need to do a touch-up. You only need foundation, as I said, around the corners of your eyes, the sides of your nose, and the sides of your mouth. Apply the Maybelline bon, Balm, especially before you're eating. Now, if you have, if you want, uh, before you intensify your lip color, let's say for afternoon and evening, make sure you remove any balm. And if your lips have started to like peel a little bit because you've eaten an oily food or whatever, simply remove that. Take a, a you know, a face cloth. Don't have to wet it. Don't have, Just something that will take off the, the excess of anything that you may have, okay? And then apply what you need to apply. You want to go a little darker or you want to add some highlight or whatever it is that you want to do. That's all you have to do. When your lips peel, it's usually because you uh, haven't had a, don't have enough balm on your lips before you start eating because it acts it like it's acts like a shield between oily food and your lipstick. Anyway, that should help with that. So, um, let me see. As far as I can see, that's it. It's not difficult. It's not hard. It's simple. But the thing is, you need to plan ahead. You need to have your touch-up readily available, whatever it is you need, readily available for you, for quick access for you. So, and, and when you've got it planned and it's working well with your wardrobe, you are done, so then you can pay attention to all the other things that you will need to pay attention to. So I hope that helps. So now we're going to uh, take a look at some questions here, and let's see what people are asking. Good morning, Mary Ellen. Uh, Frida McGuire, I love listening to you. Happy Christmas. Thank you. Pamela Prescott, good morning, Sharon. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Jane Griffin, Merry Christmas. Um, uh, Kathleen... Uh, Loverso, uh, Merry Christmas, and uh, to you and your family, Sharon, and happy and happy blessed New Year. Good morning, Jan Cook. Um, I think we have a question here from Pamela Prescott. Uh, yes, but you look beautiful like that. I know not. 
I know not so well. Not sure if I understand uh, what you mean. Um, uh, if you're talking, I'm going to s s think that maybe it's about the early morning, that, that that's what you may be, be talking about. No, You know what it is? Having a well-moisturized face, uh, having a cleansed face that's well-moisturized uh, will make a difference in... Uh, in, in, in how your, your skin looks in the morning. But again, a, that little bit of powder will do all kinds of things to help out. Um, and uh, Kaya Girl, good morning, happy holidays, Joyce, Merry Christmas, Joyce Moses, love the updos. Good. Updos really, really, really do make a difference. Um, and let's see, you're looking so elegant, Sharon. Happy. You know what it is, guys? I'm, I'm going to be really, you know, it's really simple. This is, this is what I wear all the time. There's, there's, it's n nothing special. But, but what I, when I did this video, I planned out the colors ahead of time. I planned out the overlays. Uh, so that, you know, we'd have a kind of a Christmas red theme to it. I plan to wear my red blouse. I put this poinsettia in the background here and my lipstick so that when you look at the page, it looks great. All that it is, is good planning ahead of time. And that's, that's what I'm suggesting that for your, your, your holidays, uh, however you are celebrating, that that will really, uh, good planning goes a long way. Uh, Galisa uh, Merry Christmas, Kathy Kitterman. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, so Lynn Tracy, let's see. What have we got here? I am 56 with dark hair that refuses to turn gray. Dark, thick brows and lashes. My question is, what looks harsh on my aging face? What can I do to soften my look? Okay, well, if your hair is naturally dark and your brows are naturally dark... Uh, just work with them seriously. Um, lots of women too who have not lots. Of, there's a there is a certain faction of women who have gray hair or white hair uh, and, and well into their 70s and 80s who maintain their dark eyebrows, which looks lovely. Instead of fighting it, embrace it and enjoy it. The trick is, uh, Tracy, is making sure your skin tone is even. I would think, without even seeing you, I would think that you could wear a good, solid red, a blue-red, uh, uh, um, so, um, warm red, very, very well. Make sure that your lash line is strengthened. While your hair may continue to be dark and your eyebrows will stay dark, most people will still lose the, the weight the thickness and the color of their lashes. So strengthening that lash line with eyeshadow and a flat angled brush and, and the pr procedures shown on this page will do a lot to bring back that weight that's probably needed and uh, the lip color will bring the color that you need without going any place else and Evening your skin tone will do a lot. Give that a try, Tracy, and let's see how that works for you. Uh, let's see. Kaya girl. Um, hi, Sharon. I wonder if you have any tips for making sure your foundation doesn't rub off on your collar or coat. Hmm. You could use what's known as a fixing powder. A fixing powder is usually sold with airbrush makeup, which you don't hear too much about anymore. Yes. Um, it's white. And what it and, and you can uh, actually you get it with products like uh, special effects or camouflage makeup like Dermablend. A fixing powder helps to seal. Okay, so tr try putting, once you've done what you want, then put the fixing powder on over top, and that should take care of it for you. And let's see what else we have here. Um, Cara Batiste, what are the basic products I should start with? Um, well, if you, if you take a look at the, um, the beauty playlist, Cara, Everything's listed in there, and in the description box below all the videos, I have a listing of things that I find that are the most useful for the most people. Your dual finish powder foundation, take a look at the video I did just a little bit ago about uh, 
you know, uh, how, how, what, what products I use, and it's either the MAC or the Burrell Dual Finish Powder Foundation. Get two or three lip colors of the Maybelline and get three or four of the eyeshadows from MAC. Probably just looking at your picture here, I would say get Brune Coquette Print and, um, uh, well, those three should should do it for you and uh, get a lighter color well no you don't need to get a lighter color in an eyeshadow if you get a found whatever color foundation you get for your face get another one that's a couple of shades lighter and you can use that as a highlighter on your eyes highlighter on your cheeks etc that and what you want to get to Kara is about five or six brushes now again that's all in the description box for you okay I hope that helps um, Joyce Moses, it's been four weeks since I have colored my hair. Will hair uh, powder on my new growth help with the transition? I'm not sure I understand what you mean, Joyce, except if you're thinking about hair powder from a standpoint of covering up the demarcation line. There's about a month to two month period where at the very beginning you might want to cover it over until you start to get maybe about an inch or so, uh, and then don't bother with anything. You There's Rue, which is a crayon that you can wet. Uh, it's R-O-U-I-X. You wet it, and it's, it's like a crayon, and you can put that on. You can use a dried-up mascara. You can use uh, you can use an eyeshadow, any number of things you can use, and just put it around your hairline and on your demarcation line, and that should work just fine. No need for anything really special, honestly. I hope that helps. Um, uh, Pamela Prescott, thank you very much. I was talking about my hair. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I've Okay, as long as I've I've mentioned it, if if you need if you need for me to clarify more, please let me know, uh, or or put up another question. Uh, Gisella, I have permanent eyebrows and I don't like it anymore. Mm. Gisella, I hear you. I hear you. Um, there's a couple of options you could do. Uh, one is depending on how light they are. Uh, you could cover them over with makeup. Number two, go to a corrective tattoo artist. Now, I'm assuming you have tattoo. Yes, you just said permanent eyebrows. You can go to a corrective tattoo artist and get them corrected. Uh, they can color in, uh, you know, with the same color as your skin color. They can use that pigment to cover over. OK, but I highly recommend that you go uh, after you've had some guidelines from someone like myself on where your eyebrows should be. The problem is, as we age, well, I had my eyebrows tattooed, too, but I'm so fortunate in that the front end here faded right away. It was so great because my one brow, for those of you who followed me, know it sits down here. And I have like a false brow up here that I, that I uh, you know, color in. But if I had, if that tattoo had stayed, it, it, it would be sitting down here and it would be awfully hard. I would either have to, depending again, if it's really dark, I'd have to have it re-tattooed to cover over with my own skin color. Uh, or I would use a camouflage makeup like Dermablend or something to cover over it. Because I used to cover tattoos for some brides, and it can be done. But, you know, it takes a little while. And I'm sure that most people don't want to be doing that every morning when they're getting ready. So take a look at that. Check the people out in your neighborhood who are uh, the technicians who uh, have done corrective tattoo work. And investigate that, research it, and if you have any problems, uh, uh, speak to me uh, on my uh, public beauty page or the Going Gray page, and I'd be happy to help you further. Tracy Lynn, thank you. Um, Mary Ellen, do you recommend a setting spray for your face? Actually, I don't. I don't. I don't think it does all that that much good, and it's an extra product, and it's extra money, and it doesn't really serve that big a, uh, 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 doesn't do that much of a service. What you can do, and it's been known for years, you know when you spray your hair, 
spray a little up, walk under it. Hairspray does the same thing, you know. And there'll be people say, oh, you shouldn't do that. Whatever. You put hairspray on your hair anyway, it's still going to get on your face a little bit. No, if you just, re if you just follow the recommended way of application that I put on this channel, you, you should be fine. My face, I don't have anything on it except what I say. I moisturize first, uh, I put the dual finish powder on, and the highlight and the and the blush and everything that I that I always say, this will last me. This will last me. And if I need to, if I'm let's suppose you you know you're in and out of the oven with the turkey and it's hot, okay? So what you do is you keep a Kleenex or something by and you press, 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 press if you're glistening, okay? Just press it in. And that should take care of it. If you need more, like I said, and if you're in a hurry, but you've got your, your product strategically placed so you can go in and just go one, two, three, takes maybe 15 seconds to touch up. That's a much better approach in, in, uh, in, in my opinion. And I have tried. I have tried these uh, setting sprays and I'm not impressed. So I hope that helps. Um, Denise uh, Bizzell, my question about... Above regarding scrunchies and my hair color, uh, its changes. Um, oh, sorry, Denise, did I miss something? Um, with your scrunchies, if you've got if you've got a gray-haired scrunchie and you you still got some color left in your hair, just mix mix the scrunchie and your hair together. Okay, and what's great is you can make it all nice and messy. You can either put your scrunchie on and put your own hair over top of it. And I've shown that in a couple of videos. Or you can put your scrunchie on and twist and mix your own hair color in with it so that it, it's nice and blended. I hope that answers the question. If not, put up another question because I'm going down the list here. Kathleen, what's the best foundation to conceal acne scars? What I recommend. Um... Now, if you're talking, there's a difference between texture, Kathleen, and color. Texture is one thing, and that requires special effects. Color, you can, you can get by with. You can just use what I'm using. And, and when you, you put your sponge on your face which, or your brush, you you. You push, you push the, let's suppose I had a scar here. You push, push the product in like this. You push it in. You push it in. Get more on your sponge. Push it in. It's the pushing of the product into the skin that will make the difference. And if you, if it's badly discolored, do that first, then try it with a damp sponge. Press it in when it's dry. Press in a layer of dry. Now, if you still have color bleed through, then you may want to look at a concealer. Uh, and I, I currently I'm liking the Mac uh, Pro Longwear um, concealer. So again, what, it, you have to be more clear about whether it's color or whether it's texture. Okay. And Irene Braden, hello from Northern Ireland. Joyce Moses, yes. Okay, uh, Giselle, I have permanent eyebrows, but I don't like them anymore because they turn down so much at the end because of aging. I think I think I answered this, but maybe I didn't. Um, seek out a a tattoo um, artist in your area who does corrective work, and they can be corrected. Uh, Watch this video afterwards and see, because I, I went over this a little bit more earlier, okay? Um, Joyce Moses, thank you. Do you recommend highlights to blend demarcation? No. Why? Because it prolongs getting to the finish line. It really does. And you don't know... None of us really knows what color our gray is going to be when it's growing. It, 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 as it grows in at various stages, it looks a little different than what we thought it was the stage before. Don't go that route, really. It's, it's, um, and 
like I said, it prolongs the process. And often when you, excuse me, when you need, when you want to get like a, 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 a silver color or a gray color, they have to use far more bleach. And too many women I've heard of, yes, there have been some successes, but too, but more have not been successful. It's helped to ruin their hair. So I wouldn't go that. I wouldn't go that. Concentrate instead on updating and redesigning your makeup and look at hairstyles that embrace uh, your your emerging gray and blend it in with where you're headed. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, Cafe Fay, Merry Christmas! Thank you. Same to you. Uh, and Annie Lee, Sharon, please remind me of the brand of hairspray you recommend. Ah. It's John Frieda Frizz Ease. I like the flexible hold. I use that the most. And if I'm going out in a tornado or something like that, then I use the uh, the firm hold. Okay, uh, Kathleen Leveroso, thank you. I was talking more about texture. Okay, texture. Well, then. It depends on the amount of texture, how 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 deep they are, the scars are. First of all, there's a, a few different ways you can go, but first of all, make sure that your skin color and your makeup, your, your skin tone is even. Do that. Learn the tips and tricks about how, about how to uh, do your brows, your eyebrow, your lashes, your lipstick, uh, all that sort of stuff. Get that going first. Take some selfies and assess. Is it worth looking into or can you just get by with the way it is? If it really bothers you, then seek out a dermatologist and see what can be done with current laser treatments and things of that nature to even out the, um, the uh, texture, okay? Hope that helps. Uh, let me see now. Deborah, best way to prevent under eye bleed. I do use the MAC powder as an underliner and the gel liner on the waterline. Um, uh, not quite sure what you mean by uh, gel uh, under eye bleed. Um, when you put the gel liner on the upper waterline, you want to have it apply it closer to the lash line than to the eyeball. Does that make sense? And make sure that your eyes are dry before you start blinking. Okay? If your eyes are a little bit watery at first, then use a Kleenex, sop up any moisture that may be there, put it on, and keep your eyes open. Now for the bottom, do not wear gel liner on the bottom. Your, your lash line, on your lash line here, like right here, only eyeshadow. Only eyeshadow. No gel liner, no cold pencil, no mascara. You don't need it. Just eyeshadow. And that will prevent uh, any, you know, bleeding, as you say. Give that a try, Deborah, and let me know how it works for you. Joyce, thank you. You're welcome. Kathleen, thank you. You're welcome. Deborah, yes, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So is there any other questions that anybody has? Um, let me just see if there's something, anything that I've missed for you. Um, Got to go. P Pamela Prescott, thank you. Have a wonderful day, and you as well. Um, one of the things that I, I, I need to say, too, is that um, at, because we're, for those of us who are older in, on this live stream, um, we need to aim differently towards our makeup and our appearance. We want to use classic colors. Don't, don't need to go for colored eyeshadows and things. And just because it's Christmas or New Year's is around, around the corner, no need to have all kinds of colors and shimmers and things of that nature. You don't need it. Believe me. So you want your classic colors. But what's more important than shadows and shimmer and glimmer is corrected and defined lines. 
like have your eyebrows shape corrected, having your lash line uh, done well with your eyeshadow and and blended both top and bottom so that it's uh, it, it works for where you are now it's easy and it's easy to maintain and and that your so your lips and your eyebrows are the things that need to be defined your lash line and your blush are the things that are blended and blended well. Uh, no matter what your festivities are, that's that's the smart way to go. All right, it looks like we have a couple of other questions here. Um, Joy Lambert, uh, would you recommend hair permanent for thin hair uh, to give it body? Absolutely not, Loy. I would not. I, I don't recommend the perms and coloring. And you know, the extensive studies that have been done, these chemicals on our head are not good for us. Not good for us and not good for the environment. Okay? They really aren't. Here's the thing with the perm, and I understand your thinking that it will help fluff up the hair. What happens when your perm is about a month, four weeks, six weeks old? The roots start to flatten. Why? Because they're not lifted from the curl. Have you ever seen a perm that's grown out a bit? It's all flat around the roots and then you've got the curl, uh, you know, at the ends. That's a very hard uh, hair to maintain to have it look good, okay? I would highly recommend, depending on where your thinness is, either a topper, because today's toppers are fantastic, or extensions. I use extensions all the time. I have quite thin hair, and I've noticed lately it's getting even thinner. <laughs> but that's the way it is. And so what do I do? Just pump up what I do use. Getting an extension just a single weft or maybe two wefts depending uh, depending on the length of your hair and if you have short hair extensions work really well with with uh, short hair too I mean you can have extensions that are that long trust me they they, they 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 can do a lot and the hair toppers today I strongly recommend that you look into them I think it's Paula Young I think has a uh, quite a variety too of gray hair toppers and uh you know and if you get toppers that have a monofilament top that means it looks absolutely natural it looks like you can see the scalp uh so they're they're really good to get they're lightweight they they keep their memory wave curl or whatever or bend whatever it is they that was built into them in the manufacturing process all you have to do is just shampoo them wring them let them dry wring them out let them dry they go right back to the shape and they're lightweight they're just they just sit on the top of your head so if you're thinning here which happens to a lot of women it brings back it brings back the fullness without without so much weight and you can still, you can wear your hair up with toppers. You can do all kinds of things. And they look very, very natural. I would, I would go that route before I would ever do a perm. I hope that helps. Um, Mary Ellen, do you recommend a warmer, deeper tone blush with a red wine or lip color? Um, no, <laughs> I, but, but your, 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 your question makes sense. No, I just apply more. Of what I of what I apply normally, um, with the, when I'm wearing this warmish red, or I'm surrounded by a red background, I wear both the pink and the orange. And I think you guys have seen this before, and I not think I know you have. Um, this blush and this eyeshadow, I blend together, and I use that for my blush. As you can see, it blends in nicely with everything I'm wearing. If you're if you're wearing, let's say, something that's a little bit more cool tone, just wear the pink only. Okay. Now the trick is with the eyeshadows, and this is what I love about them: you can make it darker or lighter. 
Just put a second layer on if you want a little more intensity. Now with eyebrows, uh, I think you've seen me, my, I made my eyebrows just a little bit darker today, but you've seen me where I have lighter brows when I, in the video, um, there's a couple of them I did on the Senior Seniors where I just wear a light brow. It's exactly the same product, but with a lighter hand. The trick with holidays, festivities, red carpet events, or anything like that where you have to pump it up, all you do is give it more intensity of the same things that you normally use. No extra expense, no extra product, no extra dumping into the environment. Just, just add an extra layer or apply it with a heavier hand. Okay, I, I, uh, I hope that helps Mary Ellen. And Tracy Lynn, uh, Loy, you look into a shorter hairstyle. I really, it really made my hair look a lot thicker. Ah, well, that that's a good point, Tracy. However, if you don't suit short hair, then you shouldn't go that route. If you do, great. It's like long hair. If it doesn't look that great on you, don't go that route. The thing that you have to take into consideration with whatever length hair you have is your head size in relation to your body frame. That's really important. And what's your hairline like and how thick or thin is your hair? Generally speaking, for thin hair, I would recommend having your hair longer. Why is that? Because you can put it into styles and add scrunchies and extensions that will help thicken it uh, and make it look uh, make it look thicker. If you've got thin hair and it's short, you're going to see a lot more of your scalp that way, and it will only uh, intensify unless your hair is long enough or thick enough that you can comb it over the scalp. And if you've got thin, fine hair, that's usually not the case. So a little bit longer hair is better when you've got, uh, when you've got thin hair, in my experienced opinion. Okay, uh, let's see. Mary Ellen, can you wear a topper with short hair like a pixie cut? Yes, you can. You have to get it cut for you. You have to get it cut for your, you know, your style. Uh, of hair, uh, and so you would probably want to have a, a trusted hairdresser cut that for you. But you can take a look online, and there are shorter styles of, of, of hair toppers that you can get to. They also have what they call um, postiches, where they're hair pieces, not, not like a topper. That's an old version, but it's called a pastiche. Some people still wear them, where it's hair that you just plunk on the top of your head too, and you can pull your own hair through through the hair, through the because it's, it's like a netting, and they've got holes in it, so you can pull your own hair through it. I don't think it's as, I don't think, I haven't seen them styled well enough to, to recommend. I, but, I, but certainly you can have a hair topper that's, that's, um, that's good for short hair. And I have to do a little research, you have to do a little talking, and you have to check with a hairdresser. But, um, you know, but it can work for sure. And Tracy Lambert says that that's, uh, that works fine. She's happy with that. Okay, I can't see any other questions. So um, I'm going to uh, just do a little reminder that if you have uh, any questions uh, that I haven't answered, please feel free to, uh, you know, go onto the page and... Uh, Search out what you want in the search box there or go to the playlists. And when you're in the playlists, they're all listed in, 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 um, in like. So you have makeup is one, uh, hairstyling is another, uh, you have uh, extensions is another, and there's wardrobe, and then there's my soapbox, and so on and so forth. Now, remember, please, to... Uh, subscribe to the channel because I'm not monetized or receive benefit or payment in any way. Um, and for those who are interested in the advocacy work that I do, there's my advocacy channel. Very simple. 
If you like the videos, please like, share, and subscribe. As I said, it because I'm not monetized, YouTube doesn't put me out there. So in order to spread the word, I'm counting on you guys uh, to help me out with that, okay? Now for my public beauty page, I'm at Sharon Danley Beauty. And if you want a private closed group where there's lots of conversation and lots of information, you can go to Going Gray and Loving It. And for those that want a make better, it's a pay it forward, make better. Um, uh, you can go to either channel uh, on Facebook, I should say, not channel, but page on Facebook and make a request there. And, you know, if you've had help here, if you've gained some uh, insight and some help, I really would appreciate uh, if you paid it forward in your own time, talent, or treasure in your uh, little corner of the world, help somebody out that needs it, okay, with whatever you can do to help. In my daughter, Andrea Main's name. It's the spirit of the season is Christmas is, is to share and to give. And um, I'd like you just a gentle reminder to uh, to share uh, and help out those if you've if you've been helped by anything that I've been able to supply here for you, okay. So this week's uh, quote is: "As eternal beauty diminishes, internal beauty brightens." How by what we do for others, how we share our skills, how we forgive more easily, and how we love mightily. So that's, uh, I hope that that's helped you uh, with, uh, you know, thinking about getting ready for the holidays. Thank you for joining me today, ladies. As always, it's fun to be with you. Uh, next week, I'm going to put up a quick, uh, easy to do, uh, updo with two scrunchies for your New Year's celebrations or any time. So please take good care of yourself your loved ones, and the world around you, and we will see you in the new year.